video on a really handy tool that we use with our clients. And it's awesome for figuring out exactly what your goals are, or having your goal, and then figuring out exactly what's standing in the way of you getting it, uh, and then teaching you a really handy tool at how to start problem solving those equations. So I'll start with the equation. So it's called, uh, we just called it the nutrition hack equation, but uh, it typically in business it's called the value equation. Uh, and basically the ideal outcome is at the top of the equation. So it's just a simple divide by. Uh, ideal outcome, so what you want to achieve, and then underneath in the bottom part of the equation is the roadblocks. So everything that's causing friction and stopping you from getting to your goal or could cause issues for you to get your goal, you need to list down in detail. So just dot point them. Dot point all the stuff that had, you've, you've failed previously at, things that have gotten in your way. Uh, this particular example is gonna be about nutrition. So you'd list all the things that have stopped you uh, staying healthy and staying on a consistent sort of meal plan uh, and getting that consistency with your nutrition. Uh, and consistency just means great energy expenditure, you stay lean uh, and your physique stays where you want it, pretty much. So energy expenditure, health, uh, and then your body physique. Um, so Ideally, in the equation, what you want is the top of the equation to have as little underneath it as possible. So you need to reduce as many of these roadblocks as possible to make it as easy as possible for yourself. So we need the smallest amount of issues on the bottom to get you to that top goal. So it's great, it's just a really simple way. You just go to the top, your ultimate goal, divided by your issues, uh, and then you can start sorting through your issues to reduce them on the bottom side of the equation uh, to make it more, more likely to succeed at the top. So in this example, I'm gonna use Sarah. Just a random name. Uh, her goal is she wants to lose 10 kilograms and she just wants to be, become consistent. So she's got a weight loss goal uh, and she wants an outcome, which is that she wants to obviously consistently maintain this for life. So. What do we analyze with her roadblocks? Uh, time. She's a mother of three, she's got kids, uh, she works full time, she's really low energy. She's on the go all the time and quite often with mothers they come last, they put themselves last. Um, motivation is a big one. She finds that she, uh, her motivation is in waves, uh, which is correct. Motivation does come and go in waves. So you're never gonna be motivated all the time and that's where reducing these roadblocks and becoming consistent helps alleviate those issues. Uh, she struggled previously on previous meal plans and, and programs she'd done with uh, her family eating differently than what her meal plan was set out to. So she found it tricky to cook for the family and then cook herself a separate meal and, and do all that sort of stuff. Meal prep time, she struggled to find the time. Like she's got three kids, when she's not working, she's with the kids. When is she meant to be able to prep her meals for the week to make it easier for her during her busy work week? Uh, so that was another area. Uh, and then she was always relieved to finish previous programs. So every previous challenge she'd done or every nutrition program she'd done previously, she was relieved to get to the end of it, to go back to normal, which is what we're seeing re is a really, really common occurrence with most programs and challenges and things like that, is that the nutrition programs are just unrealistic to most people's lifestyles and not customize their lifestyles. It's a copy and paste template, eat this uh, without taking into account all these issues at the bottom that are gonna make it really hard for them to maintain that. Um, so we've identified all, all um, Sarah's weak points and the areas she's struggling in. Uh, now it's time to identify how we can start allevi alleviating some of those stresses and how we can start reducing these friction points to make her ideal outcome more realistic. Time is a massive one. And I think it's a massive one for all of our clients and most people out there, they're time poor. Um, so we need to delve into why why that is and how we can solve it. So in Sarah's case, she always nails breakfast. Breakfast is her easy, easiest meal. It might be something like uh, oats, oats and berries and a protein shake, easy done. And that's what we find in common with a lot of people as well. Breakfast is not a problem. Cool, so we leave breakfast alone. We, we take a measurement of that, we understand what she's consuming there and we can incorporate that into the rest of her program really struggles with lunch. Like, so she's working full time. If she doesn't get time to do her meal prep on a Sunday, she's got no lunches for the week and she finds herself either snacking through the day or, or missing lunch completely or uh, going down to the cafeteria and getting 
getting some sort of fatty foods that aren't too good for her that really zap her energy in the afternoons. Uh, love snacks, and that probably has something to do with the fact that she's not getting a decent lunch uh, and she's finding herself grazing through the day and grazing on the wrong stuff, the coffee and cake for the lunchroom and the biscuits. Um, so what we've identified here is where exactly in her time points she is struggling and now we can uh, solve those problems with her. So we know that lunch is the big one. So we know that what's well, the easiest solution where she doesn't have to do any meal prep and save time? She can organise five meals a week to be delivered from a local food provider company. And there's thousands out there and we can help you with that. But basically she's buying back time. They're relatively cheap. Generally these meals go from anywhere from $8 to $11 per meal. They're really healthy and nutritious. There's no time expenditure on them. You literally click and forget and they turn up and you take them to work with you. So all of a sudden we are looking for the simplest way for Sarah to get from A to B. And in this case for Sarah, it's about taking away that necessary meal prep time that she would normally have to do with most programs and replacing it with a fast and convenient option that's healthy and it's going to reduce her snack intake. The other thing we look at is, okay, if she loves snacks and that's, uh, that's what she wants to do, or she wants to incorporate snacks in your meal plan, we would then identify uh, healthy alternatives for those snacks and make sure that they were easily accessible, very low prep time, if any prep time, uh, and they were conveniently stationed at her, at her work ready to go. Uh, so that's how we reduce time there. Um, basically then we'd analyze what her nutrition uh, looked like, uh, and basically this is the big one. Uh, eat realistic amounts. So you, you might have a big, hairy, audacious goal of losing 10 kilos in, in, in two months or, or whatever the target might be. But generally speaking, most programs will put you in such severe calorie deficit that you're going to find yourself snacking like a mad person and driving yourself crazy, getting tired, low energy, and starving yourself. And that makes, that makes it tricky to maintain. That's not realistic. And that's where it comes down to relieved to finish the program. It's maintainable for a little bit, like you, you'll nail that low, uh, low calorie program because you're motivated in the first couple of weeks, but after that, it, it gets, gets oh, you get over it really quick. So again, position your meal plan a realistic amount. So it just needs to be in calorie deficit, but realistic to your appetite and what you're aiming to do. So the weight loss might be a little bit slow, slower, but the impact on your energy levels, your life is gonna be a lot less. Uh, slightly, like instead of uh, giving people meal plans where she, uh, where the family, she has to cook separate meals from her family, why not analyze and make slight adjustments to family dinner? So you, generally, most families eat quite healthy at dinner time uh, in a balanced way. So they generally eat meat, a veg, and a carbohydrate, uh, like a mashed potato or a baked potato or something like that. So why not make slight adjustments to that dinner so she's not having to, and the family's not having to make these massive changes in, in, in their lifestyle. So again, we can reduce that friction point of having to eat different meals out. So a good way, a good, really easy, good example of that would be family always has spaghetti bolognese on a Thursday night. Instead of pasta, uh, we're just going to have zucchini instead. So you can get those cool zucchini um, spaghetti makers from the supermarket. We would, go, we would chuck it in one of those and that way she's, got a, she's not changing huge things about dinner, slight changes that are gonna have a massive impact. Um, with most of our nutrition too, you'll find a reduction in gluten and dairy uh, helps with a lot of issues, but we can delve, delve into that in another video. Um, easy, so that's slight adjustment, family dinner done. Reduce junk food in house. So this is just a really, really basic one and it, it's so easy to do. Um, I'm exactly the same as all you guys, is if I've got chocolate, chips, junk food in the house, I'll eat it. Like, there's not, I don't think there's many people out there who could have a cupboard full of junk food and not snack on it and not choose those snacks over healthy alternatives. So reduce them in the house. It's gonna make your family healthier, it's gonna make you healthier, and when you don't have it to grab while you're in the house, you reach for the healthy alternative. Uh, so you've reduced your access to junk food. The other thing is you're gonna save big bucks. Uh, reducing junk food and, and um, crappy buying is a great way to, to save money. Like we did a test with one of our nutrition shopping lists from one of our programs uh, and it was about $60, $70 a week cheaper than the current shop we do now. And it's generally because we were buying uh, brand name things on top of stuff. But if you're just buying healthy food, fruit and veg, meat and the essentials, uh, whole foods, it's actually quite affordable. Um, 
The other, this is the key one, you don't need to be motivated to be in deficit. So if you're having to stay motivated to stick at your nutrition, it's not easily accessible enough for your lifestyle. You don't need, like if you, if you need to be motivated to stay on a diet, it's probably not adjusted well enough for your lifestyle and what you're looking to achieve. It shouldn't have huge impacts uh, where you cannot continue to do it after a certain period of time. It should be something where you get the balance right, you nail it, you get consistent, you lose your 10 kilos, and then you're eating in a sustainable style for you and your family where you can maintain that and enjoy your life. So real key one, don't have to be motivated to be in deficit. And deficit is what will get the results, simply put. If you are consuming less calories than you're outputting in energy, then uh, you're going to be in deficit. Uh, and then reduction in some foods. So I touched on that earlier. Reducing, uh, reducing gluten, reducing dairy is going to have a positive effect uh, on your digestive system and also your energy expenditure. Uh, then most importantly, identifying the triggers. So most people can do really well, generally speaking, but when something goes wrong and there's a high stress situation, uh, that's that's when it can go pear shaped. So identifying what Sarah's triggers were, uh, and in this case, it was stress. And stress could be anything from work-related, family stuff, rushing around after the kids, uh, missing a meal, missing like missing a meal through the day and then getting stressed about not eating enough, uh, binge eating in, at night because you haven't been able to eat all day causes stress. Um, basically, uh, it's about conscious thoughts. So <laughs> if you are... Consciously thinking, uh, if you're consciously thinking when you realize you're stressed and you're going to eat, it starts a really powerful transition in your brain where you've identified, oh crap, this is what I normally do, uh, and then we replace. So consciously catch yourself in the act of going, oh crap, I'm, you know, I, I feel like I need to eat salty chips because I'm, I'm stressed out. Replace it with something simple and easy uh, that can form a new uh, brain pattern for that behavior. So one really good one for our clients is one minute of deep breathing. Uh, generally six seconds in, six seconds hold, six seconds out for one minute, uh, and it's going to completely reset your central nervous system. You're going to be nice and relaxed, and that stress is going to diminish, and that urge to binge eat is going to diminish as well. Another one is if you're quite uh, up and about like me, sometimes you're too jacked up, for the deep breathing, uh, you can't concentrate on it, you get anxious, so times 10 body weight squats. Just crank out some sort of 10 seconds, 30 seconds of exercise, uh, and again, it's gonna trigger uh, a distraction and a new thought process around what you're doing. Um, so, and it's about being organized as well. So if you are super stressed, it's about having your, you know, your delivered meals in the fridge. It's about having your healthy snacks, uh, and it's about being confident in your plan. So. What we've done here is we've literally gone through this value equation. We've cancelled out time, uh, and we've we've found areas to save time and convenience. We've uh, we've gone on to motivation, and we know that if we, it's realistic, you're not getting hungry, you've got plenty of energy, uh, and you're in deficit, you're going to be getting results. Uh, different family meals. We are trying. We're, let's try and be realistic and make it similar to the family meals you're currently eating. Meal prep time cancelled out by getting the delivered meals uh, and then no relief to be finished the program because this is something you can just continue to do. Uh, it, it may need to change as your results change. It's going to get um, the law of diminishing returns. You're going to get quite high results in a short period of time and then you're going to plateau. But it's about, it's about identifying that this is a great way to look at things so it shouldn't be too tricky to, to maintain after that. So we've just cancelled out all our roadblocks uh, and now it's just about a little bit of effort from Sarah uh, and she's going to get those results. So you can see how going through and analysing your actual situation and then mapping out how you can alleviate some of those trigger points and stress points is a great way to, to hit those goals uh, and stay accountable to them.